Canada is not a nation known for cycling, but in 2012, they soared to the top of the Giro d'Italia as the rider Hinsidal went on to win the Maglioroso. But what the f happened to Canada's first Grand Tour winner? Ryder Hinsidal is a name that looms large in the world of Canadian cycling. Born in Vancouver, British Columbia, in 1980 to Norwegian immigrants. Hazardal began his career in cycling as a mountain bike rider with initial success as he became a two-time world champion in the mountain bike relay event in both 2001 and 2002. He won silver as an individual at the 2003 World Mountain Bike Championships and competed at the 2004 Summer Olympics for Canada in the mountain bike category. Thereafter, Hazardal became part of the transition cycling athlete culture that was following in the steps of Carol Evans and Jakob Fulsang changing from mountain bike to become a full road cyclist. Hazardal began his professional career on the road in 2005 with the Discovery Channel team after riding for Rabobank on the lower divisions and quickly established himself as one of the top riders in the sport. In 2006, he showed his potential by finishing fourth in the very esteemed Volta Catalunya. Hazardal continued to show steady progress, managing to finish in the top 10 of several stage races, including the Tour of Gilia and the Tour of California. In 2008, Hazardal joined the Canadian based Slipstream Chipotle team which later became Garmin Chipotle. With his new team, he continued ever more to develop as a rider, and he showed that he was very good as an overall GC rider and a time trial specialist in some respect. In 2009, Hazardal had his breakthrough year as he started well finishing 10th in what is now known as Strada Bianchi, and he went on to finish 8th in Torino Adriatico overall before he was part of the Tour de France team that helped Bradley Wiggins finish 4th overall in the 2009 edition. A day away from finishing your second Tour de France, how does that feel? Oh, it's good, yeah. I mean, I think I was super proud to be a part of this team, you know, Garmin Slipstream. I think this tour really uh, showed ourselves well and, you know, we're going to be uh, still battling out even tomorrow. But this wasn't the only feat for Hazardal. He also managed to get his first professional victory in 2009 in La Vuelta, España winning up the legendary Alto de Verafique, a mountain stage, and it was a tremendous victory by the Canadian. The following year in the Vuelta at Catalonia, he had a strong showing, finishing sixth overall and also 11th in the Tour of the Basque Country before heading to the Ardennes Classic, where he was very impressive, finishing second behind a rampant Philippe Gilbert in the Amstel Gold race on the Cowberg, ninth in the Flesh Ballon, and 12th in Liège, Bastion Liège, before he jetted off to the Tour of California, where Hazardal managed to win the final stage of the race, thereby also finishing fifth overall. During the 2010 Tour de France, Ryder Hazardal's impressive performances included a fourth place finish on the third stage, which featured challenging cobblestone sectors. He led the race solo for much of the day until he was caught in the final six kilometers. As a result of his valiant effort, he was named the most combative rider of the day and won the red jersey numbers for stage four. On stage 17, which finished up the mythical Col de Tourmolet, rider Hazardal managed to finish fourth on the day behind Andy Schleck, Alberto Contador and Joaquim Rodriguez and this thereby moved him inside the top 10 to eighth place nine minutes and 18 seconds behind the yellow jersey. In the time trial, he managed to move himself up further as he finished 49th, thereby finished seventh and moved himself up in the history books to sixth overall. This was the highest placed finish for a Canadian rider in the Tour de France in 22 years since Steve Bauer finished fourth in the 1988 race. 2011 was a quieter season for Hazardal with a few top tens in the Tour of the Basque Country and the Tour of California. But at the Tour de France, Hazardal was an incredible teammate and he was able to help his team win the team time trial stage on stage two. Plus he found himself in an interesting situation with his teammate Tor Husov and rival Edvard Bosenhagen in the finish of a stage and Hazardal and Tohusov managed to work together to get the win and Hosov was a Norwegian who lifted his hands and Hazardal finished third behind the two Norwegians. But the crowning moment in terms of Hazardal's career came in 2012 when he won the Giro d'Italia becoming the first Canadian to win a Grand Tour. The victory was a stunning achievement that cemented his status as one of the top riders in the world. He rode consistently through the Italian Grand Tour 
finishing in the top 10 on eight occasions out of the 21 stages. He took the lead on stage seven, a mountainous stage in which he finished fifth and he held it all the way to stage 10. However, an incredible battle between him and Joaquim Rodriguez meant that the Spanish rider took over the jersey and going into the final stage after an incredible battle on the Stelvio stage, Hazardal found himself 31 seconds adrift to Joaquim Rodriguez. Rider Hazardal managed to finish sixth on the day in the final time trial in Milan, one minute and nine seconds down on the eventual winner Marco Pinotti and crucially the Maglio Rosa wearer Joaquim Rodriguez finished one minute and 56 seconds down and this meant that victory was going to Rider Hazardal by 16 seconds, which was the closest winning margin since the 1976 Giro d'Italia. Hazardal's victory was a breakthrough for not only himself, but also Canadian cycling, and he was hailed as a hero upon his return home. He received numerous accolades, including the Leonard Kushner Award for Canadian Male Athlete of the Year. He was also named one of Canada's most influential people by Globe and Mail. And on top of that, Hazardal also raised $10,000 for charity as he auctioned off his Malia Rosa. While Hazardal's Giro Italia win was undoubtedly the high point of his career, he had other notable successes after that as well. In the 2013 season, he played a pivotal part in his teammate Dan Martin's liege Liège victory and Hazardal himself went on to finish 8th that year. The following season, he managed to finish 9th overall at the Giro d'Italia and later managed to win a breakaway stage in La Vuelta España ahead of Oliver Sal on stage 14. In the 2015 season, the merger of Canadel and Garmin Sharp created the newly found team Canadel Garmin with Hazardal among their roster. He had a quiet start to the season, failing to make an impact in the races before April. However, he was chosen as the leader once again for the mountainous Giro del Trentino. Unfortunately, things didn't go his way as Hazardal lost 2 minutes and 46 seconds to Richie Port on stage 2 and he finished the race 14. During the Giro d'Italia that year, Hazardal struggled in the first week as he tended to ride behind the peloton, resulting in time losses. But he had a strong comeback in the final week, especially on the mountain stages. And on stage 19, he managed to finish second to Fabio Aro. And on the following stage, the 20th stage of the Giro, which featured the unpaved roads of the Col del Finestre, Heizadal gained more time and overtook Leopold Koenig and Steven Kreuzweg on the general classification after finishing once again second to Fabio Aro and thereby claiming fifth overall. For the 2016 edition, he changed to Trek Segafredo. However, he did not finish the Giro d'Italia that year. And at the end of the season, Canada's greatest cyclist finished his very illustrious career at Il Lombardia. Despite the incredible accolades of Hazardar's career, though it was not without controversies as in 2015 he admitted to using performance enhancing drugs during his career, saying that he made mistakes but since then had become a clean athlete. The admission was a blow to his reputation but he remained respected within the cycling community for his dedication and hard work. During his seasonal breaks, he would spend winters in Hawaii with his wife and escape the cold of the Canadian winters. And this is much the same that he's been doing in retirement. And he said he definitely liked the warm weather and the beach and the ocean. And he had spent every single winter since 2007. So would probably keep that routine going. So what happened to Ryder Hazardell? Well, Put short, nothing. He just ended his very illustrious career and showed that Canadians are not just there to make up the numbers, they can well and truly win at the biggest stage of cycling in the biggest races. And he showed throughout his career that he was a prolific team leader, winning plenty of big races, but also when it came to it, he was a very loyal teammate, being part of many of his teammates' successes and that really shows something as a rider. His 2012 achievement on the Giro d'Italia will live long in the memory of cycling fans worldwide, especially in Canada, and he will continue to inspire youngsters in Canada and worldwide to get on their bike and win bike races. So for that rider, chapeau. That's basically it for this video. Make sure to comment down below what you thought of Canada's best cyclist of all time. And of course, as always, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and check out some of our other WTF videos as well, including Fabio Aro and Marcel Kittle. But with that, thank you for watching and have a nice day.